Shows that make you laugh. Shows that make you think. Music that moves you. It could only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Welcome to Both Sides Now. Featuring the unconventional duo, Dr. Shirley and medium Kelly White. Two perspectives, one world. This is Both Sides Now. And welcome to Both Sides Now. I'm Dr. Shirley. And I'm medium Kelly White. And John, our wonderful producer, is here. Hey, ladies. Can you believe it's Monday again? (laughs) (laughs) No, I can't. (laughs) Who actually, John Mm -hmm. and James, Mm -hmm. are the cause of our wonderful, wonderful guest tonight. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Jump right into it. We're going to jump right in. So valuable, and we have her just for an hour. So, (laughs) I want you to describe her, and then I'm going to have something to say. So, Melinda Vale is our wonderful guest tonight, and uh, she's a medium who makes a difference. I'm going to read a little bit of her bio because it's extraordinary. She's an intuitive therapist, medium, author, lecturer, and certified hypnotherapist. Melinda has a very successful practice in Tempe, Arizona. Countless people have benefited from Melinda Vale's counseling and intuitive work, and I am one of them. And let's see, she has appeared in both local and national television, radio shows. She's also an accomplished speaker at the national level and gives workshops across the country to promote spiritual growth. Her work with, oh, I did not know this. Her work with police agencies helped to solve cold cases and donating her time to provide grief counseling like her Suicide Survivor Workshop, has generated her the nickname The Medium Who Makes a Difference. So we will talk all about that. Welcome, Melinda. Yay, Melinda. Hi, Melinda. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Welcome. very excited to be with you tonight. Oh, Melinda, I'm so glad you're here. You know, you and I have a very dear friend, a mutual friend, James Van Prague. So yes. shout out to James. Hey, I James. told him that you were on our show today. <laughs> And Come and have dinner with me, James. Yay. <laughs> and I have to tell you, Melinda, I'm really sick. And I, the only reason I came in today is because I really wanted to see you in person or see you the way I'm watching you right now and tell you I watched the, one of the most important videos I've ever seen today on your, on your website with you and your son, McKinnon. Yes. I don't know if I've ever been so moved in my life, Shirley, it's, you know, our show, it, we talk about healing in all forms and yeah. we talk a lot about depression and I certainly work with suicide and survivors of suicide and survivors on the other side is, I loved how you put that mm-hmm. today. Um, and with your son, with major depression, I was so, um, I, I was so Im- I, I, I moved by the raw content that you and your son talked about on this video about and, and as a mother to another mother, how you were able to do it, as as from a medium point of view, how you were able to do it. But well, this is with your son. I was yeah. so imp- uh, blown away. Shirley, you will, it's everybody, everybody has got to watch this video. Everybody. And I thought how brave you were and how brave your son is. Your really wonderful son. Thank you so wow. much. Wow. I cried throughout from the beginning to the end. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I had a hard time not to cry <laughs> for sure. Um, emotional courage is uh, something that my children have observed because I've had a rather difficult karmic profile as many mediums do as you know Kelly we as mediums often come into this world with a heavy karmic profile so that we understand others and are able to work through that vibrational frequency that gives us the ability to have can't you know the compassion and the empathy and Mm -hmm. and and move that energy through us And so I I believe that my children have watched someone with emotional courage. I I think that's one of the things I've done right Mm -hmm. is to um, show my kids how to, you know, stand up for, you know, um, something that they believe in. McKinnon has been struggling with clinical depression for a long time. We do have depression running through our family. We also have bipolar disease running through our family. He was hospitalized last year with it. He will be 38 years old in July. Um, We've had a very bad bout this year, um, and he was very suicidal. And our video was about his journey into depression, and hopefully a little bit about some of his journey towards getting out of depression. I think many people misunderstand depression and want to say, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get on with life. 
and that's not what it is at all. And there's such a stigma attached to suicide. Um, you know, we always say that somebody committed suicide as if they've committed a crime, um, rather than understanding that just like you can have cancer and die from it, you can have depression and die from it. It's the same kind of a, a situation. And, and so many people are in that old paradigm that we're punished somehow if we take our own lives and, and we're not punished. We do have responsibility for something like that, but you know, I think it's, it's, I think it's been, um, a journey to um, have someone in my own family with this level of depression, whereas I can help survivors of suicide from this side to the other side with, um, you know, understanding them just a little bit better. Yeah. Melinda, wow. Melinda, that is so beautifully mm -hmm. said. I mean, I've never, I haven't had a chance to see that oh. video, but the way that you reframe suicide is I, I've always felt the same way as you do. I never saw it as something, you know, if someone leaves kids behind and small kids, you know, that, that's that's difficult, right? Um, yeah. But uh, but I never saw it as something is something necessarily. A, yeah, because mm -hmm. it's you just want to stop the pain. And I right. completely understand right. that as well. Right. And, you know, I. I, ha I, I said this on the video, but I'll, I'll say it tonight. One of the hardest prayers that I've ever prayed mm -hmm. was to McKinnon communing with his spirit, telling him oh. not to stay on this planet for me, oh. but rather to stay on the planet for himself, because I don't want my child to be in pain. Um, and if he has to go, mm. I will try to understand it and not be anchoring him here in pain. So it was one of the hardest prayers that I've ever had to pray. Um, and I did that last year when he was in the hospital and, and, um, and, and I want him to do what's best for him. Yeah. That, yeah. That's oh, about as selfless as you can get. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm telling you, Shirley, you'll cry through You're crying uh, now. <laughs> and you, you'll cry throughout the whole you thing. Know, I, I'll tell you something, Shirley. I, I never told him that. And, he and I had an agreement before we went on the air that we would be honest and forthright and do the best we could. Um, my life partner and I were very concerned at one or two times during the video that he would get up and leave the room because he had to share some very painful experiences and some very painful losses of his own oh. in life, people that he lost to suicide right. as well. And I never told him that 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 was my prayer until that night oh, wow. and I wow. you know I was in one of those modes you guys you know when you're being in one of those modes where you're the interviewer and you're mm -hmm. you know doing your thing and, and you know you're you're trying to get the point across and I was in one of those modes where I wasn't sure I observed his reaction in real time and I haven't looked at the video yet so I'm not even sure what his reaction was to tell you the truth yeah. um, but I did share that with him and I did it um, because I thought it was important for everyone to know that mm -hmm. um, this is a, a subject that we 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 understand very little about. Right. We really do. Yeah. Right. It was. It's usually such a taboo subject. Yeah. yeah. But the way you embraced it, and you did it with such a from the love of a mother, from the love of a professional, from the love of a human being to another human being, from one soul to another soul. I don't. I was riveted. I was moved. I, I think everybody needs to see this because ultimately he gives fabulous tips. Yes, he does. Great tips mm -hmm. about yes, you know he does. how you know how and he's this is a, a guy who really has survived a lot. Yes, he has. Yeah, yeah unbelievable. Yes, has. Yeah, everybody needs to watch wow. this, and it's we can watch it on your site. So go. Yes. John will tell everybody yeah. how John, to watch what it. Is, what is uh, Melinda's site? Can you? Sure. It's Melinda Vale at MelindaVale.com. Oh, I'm sorry. It was John's pussy. No, it's no, okay. No, 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 I actually no. have it under your name right now. So it's just Melinda Vale, V A I L.com. Melinda. Now, I vale. have one that's Melinda's Angels.com. Okay, Melinda's Angels is a. Um, a group of people that um, have joined a kind of like a club where we get together. It's like a spiritual club where we get together every Wednesday night and I have guests and this is what McKinnon and I were on and, and oh. we have people like join this group and it's a closed group where people can ask questions. I do readings. I, you know, um, I uh, have guests now th girls this week. I have to tell you, 
on my angel group this week, I have a woman by the name of Karen Perry who lost her three children uh, under 10 and under five years ago um, on Thanksgiving Eve in a plane crash. Oh, my God. And um, I was the first medium that she came to after losing her children. Mm. And I have to tell you, those kids... (laughs) give such wonderful information to her and over the five years of course karen would come fairly regularly at first now less regularly she mm-hmm. just comes in to get a make a phone call to heaven is what i call <laughs> yeah. it that's and so great. uh she has a, a a a book that's written called angels three um she's had an amazing journey um into trying to understand her karmic profile and what it takes to move from survivor of something like that to thriver. Um, And she is thriving. She is teaching. She is talking. She is letting people know there's life after that kind of a tragedy. She's had other tragedies um, and is an amazing woman. So that's who my guest is going to be on Wednesday night. Wow. Well, we'll make sure we tune in for that. We have shows like that a lot. And um, it's it's a fun group. And if anybody wants to join, they just get on, on that part of the website and uh, join us. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Wow. So when is it? It's every, it's every Wednesday night, Wednesday night at 7 PM, seven, seven, um, Arizona time, um, which, you know, Arizona time never changes. So it's a little bit different every time, you know, of the, of the year, Arizona time stays consistent until, um, eight 30. So we spent an hour and a half and that was the show that my son was on was that particular show. And we actually are going to release that video on YouTube because we did get tremendous feedback from people who Mm -hmm. did watch it. And thank you so much, Kelly, for for bringing it up because suicide is oh. again such a a subject mm-hmm. that is um hard to understand depression is right. a as a hard yeah. subject to understand you know and i have to tell you what's interesting is that w- when your mother is a medium mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah how does that work yeah. <laughs> i get it <laughs> i think it's challenging my my yeah. daughter says to me why don't you just go and join the circus mother <laughs> <laughs> no my my daughter used to say mom please please just don't say anything please <laughs> Okay. And then I won't say anything unless you ask, you know, it's very funny. Now, do you, Melinda, do you get sometimes some messages for them as well? Well, my friend had a friend that took his own life a couple of years ago, and he was uh, also a young man that was close to me. It was an accidental suicide. He was a heroin user and he was sober for a year and he um, um, had a relapse and used as much heroin as he once did, which will take your life when that happens. And I was so furious with that kid that I told, don't you dare come and speak to me. I am not going to speak to you. <laughs> and, then, and then one night, his girlfriend, a girl that I knew, showed up at one of my events. And his his name was Jake, but he has a real name that he uses, which I cannot remember at this moment in time. And let's just say it's Bob. But um, I'm like, well, who's Bob? And she raised her hand. And I was like, oh, damn you, little Jake. You got in here anyway. You will not. <laughs> <laughs> you ended up talking to me anyway. Oh, that's so, great. Uh, the, kid, the kid did come in and 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 give some information and and to let us know he was safe. But uh, my son um, lost a a romantic interest through suicide. She mm. um, left a note for him, mm. and um, he they had not fully developed their romance, so it was just an interest of his, um, and. Um, uh, you know, he, I, he toys with the idea, I think, of me talking to her. I didn't, ne- I never met her mm-hmm. um, because, again, it was just a love, it was just an, an, a romantic interest. They hadn't developed anything. And she was suffering from uh, another loss. And he was being careful of how he moved into her vulnerability, so to speak. Yeah. And they became friends first and didn't have a romance. So that was the beginning of some depression for him. And, you know, every once in a while I say to him, you know, if you want to talk to her, we can try because I don't know about you, um, Mm -hmm. Kelly, but you know, when I'm trying to work for family and good friends, I, I, you know, forget Forget about it. Not going to happen. What is that? I, I don't know. Because your ego, asked you before, I think as but... your ego gets involved, yeah. don't you think? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's you know, I, I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's, you know, similar to when, you know, when a therapist works with a friend or a, same thing, you know, or, 
or a yeah. family member. I mean, I can yeah. give advice to my friend, but I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not in that same frame of mind, and yeah. it would be a little harder to It's best to not to have any connection. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah. it's just easier. Yeah. It's yeah, just better I agree. that way. You yeah. know, but when you have that connection, you maybe want to help so much yeah. that it interferes in it. I don't Absolutely. know, you know? Absolutely. Tell I us about, know. Melinda, a little bit of your work with, uh, with the police. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's probably a show, uh, another yeah, show no, title, but just a little bit. Actually, you've caught me on a week where I'm pissed off. Okay, oh, okay. So- <laughs> well, good. Bring it on. <laughs> so there is somebody that is missing in Phoenix right now, and I am um, working with the family. But the reason I'm ticked off is because you know that psychics and mediums come out of the woodwork when something happens like that because you know they all want to make a name for themselves you Mm know oh yeah and uh, they will say things that are so inappropriate to a family that is struggling to want to know whether their loved one is dead or alive Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and you know so they'll say things like they're just abducted or they're you know, whatever they say, they say. Yeah. And I had this, you know, family who is struggling to find their sister. And she's been gone for over 12 days now and left her eight-month-old baby, her car, her phone, and her purse home. Oh, my. So when I read for them, I was able to get names and specifics of the family. So we knew what I was doing was accurate, Mm -hmm. but the stories that I hear in, in this, you know, in this scenario really, really get to you. A couple years ago, I worked um, with a missing ASU student Mm -hmm. and uh, actually um, it was on the internet quite a bit and I was on the news with it and the family called me in and he had, walked away from a a bar where he had been hazed, you know, Mm -hmm. and he disappeared. And so the family called me in. Well, you know, the the two names that I got around the kid was his father's name and a cousin's name. And both of those people were on the other side. And usually when I get names like that of people on the other side, it means that those are the greeting team, right? Mm -hmm. So told that mother that, you know, that I thought that he had gone to the other side and worked with that family. But she really wanted the publicity the mother did because she was given some information that he wasn't on the other side. And, and, um, and in fact, she kind of got mad at me a little bit. Um, and that's okay. I, I'd, I'd rather, you know, I would have loved to have been wrong about that. You know, I mean, we're, yeah. I mean, you know, Kelly, we're yeah. not right 100% of the time, right. you know, right. and, and whatever, but you know, so, but anyway, um, so it was on the news and then the news went viral and it was on international news and you know, that kind of thing. And I can't even begin to tell you guys the kind of calls that we got here in my center from people all over the country, you know, wow. some toll booth ticket taker in New Jersey on the New Jersey turnpike called me and said she was just taking tolls for money, but she was really a psychic wow. and she knew that he was alive and abducted by uh, something and here was the license plate and stuff like that. You oh know? boy. So <clears throat> it's kind of my pet peeve, <laughs> um, yep. you know, that, that, you know, this kind of interfering thing happens. Mm-hmm. Um, Do when you... you're working with the police department, you, you never get feedback from the police. They just go, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I've been on cold cases where I've been with, uh, several detectives and CSI people and all of that. And the information I, I was getting was verifiably correct, but the outcome was never given to me. Mm-hmm. So they never tell you? They never tell me. Only one time a policeman in Scottsdale wrote me an email and said, you told me that my suspect had the initials, whatever the initials were, am I, and that they were in Portland, Oregon. And yeah, we found him. He had the initials and he was in Portland. So I got one verification from that policeman, but they never tell you. They never tell you. And so do you see, do you see a a scene that clues you in on where it may be, or does it come in different, the information come in different ways? Uh, You know, see, it's what's the, what's the rub for me? You know, Shirley, it's just a rub for me because I cannot find this girl, right? Like, I know I'm in the mm-hmm. energy field. I got the name of her sister. I got, you know, right. specifics that nobody knew that the family verified. But I can't find her any more than anybody else can at this mm-hmm. moment in time. Why? 
I have no idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is it part of a karmic profile? Maybe I, you know, I, I don't know. Have I found people before? Yes. Can I find this person? No. And I actually went out it, it's, it's quite a ways from where I live and felt around the area myself to see if I could get any other information by being close by. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's really not, easy work yeah, and yeah. it certainly puts you on the hot oh, seat well, uh, bet, you bet, know yeah, uh, in yeah. so many ways but I figure I, I and I think you're with me Kelly because I can you know Kelly oh, yeah. and I everybody just met tonight but I can just tell we're, we're <laughs> yeah I did completely and, sure, and Shirley and I <laughs> hit it off like we wouldn't believe so right yeah. you, you know oh, I oh. figure Kelly if, if you if you're going to do this work you better Damn it, be emotionally encouraged and get, do it. And if you screw up, you screw, screw up, up. But at least you've yeah. got your heart in it and your soul in it and you're helping people the best absolutely. way you can. You well, know? the absolutely. healing is extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, extraordinary. I see it when we work together with, mm -hmm. with a patient or, you know, when, we, when we're here every Monday night and she does readings. I mean, the healing is just extraordinary. So mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. You know, you can't expect to be right 100% of the time because you're tuning into a frequency. But... But when you are, the healing is extraordinary. So why not continue and well, try? Well, and you know, sometimes you're right and you, and nobody knows you're right until later. Even <laughs> it's the person so you're true. talking to. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. true. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, I see this. And they're like, no, yeah. no, no, no. no. I'm getting this name. No, no, no. And then that later on, they email you. Oh, right. my God, this is right. what it was. You Psychic know? amnesia. It's exactly. so funny. <laughs> I've seen it. The first time oh, we yeah. went with James, I see it where people, like, yeah. freeze. They freeze. They freeze. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's so it's so mm -hmm. amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah. Plus, other things happen that people don't understand. I think maybe it was on a show I was on with James, or maybe it was when I was hosting something with James, a woman who... Um, had a son that passed away um called in about something that uh, was pretty serious and instead of getting her son i got her aunt mm. who actually passed away from the same condition oh wow, oh, wow. and so then mm -hmm. you know when i when it all came out i actually said to her would you call me i'll give you a free hour would you would you call me i'll give you a free hour because she really wanted to talk to her son well, of course, when she talked to me privately, her son talked like gangbusters. <laughs> right. For whatever reason, he didn't want to talk mm -hmm. in, in front of lots of people watching or, or whatever. You know, I just did a show in Vegas and I had the same thing. There are lots of spirits talking, lots of things. And this one woman, you know, came up. I got a hold of her mother, blah, blah, blah. And she says, anything from my son? <laughs> no, I don't see your son. Right. right? So, so true. then she came later and her her son, of course, had taken his own life. She'd never talked to, no, talking to, that's good English, Melinda. She had <laughs> never spoken to a medium before. And so um, he didn't want to do that in front of a crowd of people. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That happens. Yeah. That's yeah. It's too private to share. They won't. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I don't know, you guys, it, it, you know, you know, it's all great. Everybody's talking about, you know, evidential mediums and being, mm -hmm. Um, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah, scientific data. And yeah, have I had my brain mapped while I've been doing this stuff? Yeah, sure. I have. Okay. Yeah, I got a scientist that says my brain moves and your brain moves too. And so what next? <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. Like, yeah. how yeah. do you help these people? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You right. Know? So, so true. Yeah. I don't know, you guys. It's, That's exactly it. it. And it's not about convincing people because it's okay if you don't believe like, you know, in my community, you know, in psychology, <laughs> you know. I don't care if people think that I'm crazy because I do a show with Kelly and I believe this. <laughs> I really you. don't care. And I, you know, went to UCLA. It's very research-oriented and left brain. So it satisfied that part of my brain. Mm -hmm. But this, I don't really care if people, well, you know. It, you know, the best psychologists are the ones that understand that spirituality and psychology, right. when they're married together, create yeah. the energy that allows someone to get better. You can't just yeah. do psychology. You can't just do spirituality. You have right. to blend those things yeah. together in order for somebody yeah. to get well. Well, I think you're That's so great. right because we are on earth and on earth, mm -hmm. you know, you can help someone with psychology, but the spirituality mm -hmm. helps, you know, so it's really both sides. Oh, it's mm -hmm. both sides. Yeah. I guess we're onto yeah. something. Yeah. 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 I was wondering, Melinda, can you talk to us about the karmic profile? I was just going to yeah. ask the get same out. question. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm dying to know. So, you know, I want you guys to, I got three books in the work, works, guys. Okay. Books, you got to watch for the, the books coming up. 
And then something else popped up today, so maybe four. I don't know. Anyway. Well, we'll have you on to promote them oh, when they come out. Thank absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you. So I, the karmic profile is what really interests me because I think that people really understand it without understanding it. So, you know, we've got five attributes to our karmic profile. We've got nature. We've got nurture. We've got Akashic records. We've got emotional maturity. And we've got how you interact with your, your higher power or God or the universe or whatever you want to label it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, like, for example, somebody's nurture, let's take Oprah Winfrey, for example, <laughs> would tell us that she shouldn't be where she is in life. But there's got to be something in her nature that allowed her to supersede her nurture. So when we're looking at my son's karmic profile, for example, even though I do not have, as far as I can see, suicide on either side of the family although i'm investigating it now we certainly have alcoholism and he does on his father's side as well we certainly have mental illness we certainly have you know uh, bipolar disorder and my father had uh, post trauma he he came home from World War two oh. with white hair uh, wow. and PTSD and depression are very very similar right. so you have this switchboard of understanding how things plug in to who you are mm -hmm. by looking at just your your nature and your nurture and understanding you know what nonsense might have been placed in your brain by a parent, although no parent looks at their baby and says, oh, you're so cute, I'm gonna muck you up. You know, but it happens, so, right? <laughs> Ain't that the truth, right. oh my right. God. I mean, don't we all muck our kids up somehow? But anyway, um, and then, um, you know, uh, what what the data is, I guess, that comes through the vibrational frequency or comes through the DNA, it, you know, a lot of people miss that. Mm. And understanding that when you're adopted, you've got a double whammy because you have the data that yeah. comes through your DNA and you may not always know it. And I'm not just talking about the medical data. I'm talking about the vibrational frequency, the energy that transfers yeah. from generation to generation. You know, when you look at like womb mates, when you look at twins that are separated and one gets adopted out and the other gets adopted out, you hear these stories where they name their dog the same thing and right. marry this, a, a woman of the same name and yeah. have red doors on their houses stuff like that you yeah. know yeah so it comes for nature nurture and then akashic records people miss their akashic records and for those people who are listening that don't understand what that is it's past life stuff you know mm -hmm. um i have the most fascinating past life story if you want to hear it about an ex-husband of mine I oh have yes ex <laughs> love it ex-husband <laughs> stories <laughs> love ex -husbands, but, you know, I, i'm right I there with you me too <laughs> It was husband number three, but husband number two doesn't count. We only lasted for six months. <laughs> well, we do have a lot in common. We sure do. <laughs> yeah, you do too. On that. Six months over here. No, nine. <laughs> nine months? Nine months. Okay, well, go you. <laughs> you beat me on that one? Nine no. months, Mary? Well, nine months, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I was studying hypnosis and I did a past life regression and I saw that we were in the civil war together and I told him that I was with the union, he was with the confederacy and that I was angry with him for not joining me in the union. And I um, saw him get shot and killed and I saw a cannonball land near my leg and blow my leg off. And then I kind of went home to my farm in Pennsylvania and was sad ever since I had a depressed life. Mm -hmm. And so I went home and I said to him, listen, we had a civil war incarnation together and I want to see what you get. And he was the kind of man, you know, that would have said that I was Scarlett O'Hare and he was saving me from the burning city <laughs> of Atlanta. But he actually said, we're brothers. I'm going with the Confederacy. You're going with the Union. You're abandoning me. You always abandon me. And P.S. Oh I abandoned him again. I divorced him. But there's a little bit more to the story wow. that's really even more interesting. So he so got we, that before you even brought it up to him? I never told him what I got. He got the exact same thing. There was a slight difference in what we got. One, I called us like John and Tom, and he called us like Dick and Harry. Like mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. we had different names that we called us, but the exact same scenario. Wow. So moving forward on the karmic profile and the psychic connection, 17 years later, I hadn't spoken to him in 17 years. I had a dream that someone around him died. And common sense told me that it would be one of his parents because my parents had died. And so I reached out to him, private message on Facebook and said to him, hey, 
Yeah, I had a dream and one of your parents died. And um, while I've got you, I want to tell you, I'm sorry for everything that was my responsibility to the demise of our marriage. And he wrote back and said, no, my parents are still alive, but I heard your mother died. And I was really sorry about that. And I wanted to tell you that I too am sorry. And we kind of made amends. Wow. And about six months later, he had a heart attack and he died. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. So whatever the karmic profile is between him and I was resolved in this lifetime because I followed my gut, my intuition. I reached out to him. I made amends. He made an amends back. Interestingly, now I do not have prophetic dreams, but in, I do dream some. And about two days after he died, um, he came to me in a dream and said, I'm safe. I'm fine. I want to tell you thank you. Um, I really did love you. And he had moved on and had a perfect partner for him because, of course, I Facebook stalked her after he died. And, <laughs> <laughs> you got to love this girl. I love her. <laughs> and, uh, and I think she was perfect for him. But McKinnon, going back to my son, he was the one that helped me raise my son. And he used to play the guitar. And <clears throat> his favorite song was House of the Rising Sun. And Right after he died, McKinnon and I were driving along and House of the Rising Sun came wow. on the, the radio. So that was our little gift from from him. Wow. So that, you know, so the Akashic records are important. And when I'm now studying my family background to see where my DNA, my karmic profile, I have found out from a cousin that on my father's side, which I know a lot about my mother's side, but not much on my father's, that I had two great, great grandfather a great great grandfather and a great great uncle that fought in the civil war they were from pennsylvania and they were on the union side i'm wondering if i might have been one of them wow, wow. I, I believe we do reincarnate yeah. back and forth into our families yeah, yeah. i do too really? i do too really? so so now do you <clears throat> go ahead i'm sorry no please go do go. i was just going to yeah. ask you do you do readings on the akashic record and help people kind of figure out a little bit about their past lives you know what shirley i'll tell you why i don't I, I'm happy to hypnotize somebody and help them see what their Akashic record is in their past lives. But I don't want to take on the karma of telling somebody what their past life was right. if I don't have the evidence to back me up. Mm. In other words, when I'm giving an in-life reading and mm -hmm. I get Susan and that's your sister, then good, we've got the evidence. I'm in right. your energy field. I'm but right I, there. I completely agree with what you're yeah, saying. Completely. Yeah. And I don't want to be a Fruit Looper in Windsheimer, like, right. oh, you're, you know, and, uh, you know, the people that rename themselves and something. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want the evidence. So if somebody asks me, I, I'll say, well, I don't like to do this, but this is what I get that you, you know, you were a Japanese or whatever, and, and they might say to me, oh, I'm, I'm really drawn to Far Eastern stuff mm -hmm. or, or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather somebody found out for themselves. I have. Um, and that's my other book, by the way, is um, my dog. I have a dog, a little dog, a little Havanese that stays in my office. Mm -hmm. And she's writing a book called Dog, Ma, and Karma. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> that's fantastic. And, and, she, and she's writing a book about the therapy part of what I do. I'm watching some of the therapy part of what I do, which would include some people who've had some past life regressions that are amazing. And I'm also an in-life regression specialist where I clear trauma um, from in life, especially molestation is my area of expertise, but wow. I also work with policemen and firemen that have had um, post trauma on the job too. Oh, wow. So some of my area of expertise on as a hypnotherapist is to work through some of that trauma stuff. So well, it's so funny. I mean, we are, you know, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. The three of us, I think, mm -hmm. are kindred spirits because yes. I work. I'm a trauma expert too. She does somatic yeah. experience. Yeah, I work it through the body. Yeah, so, that's awesome. That that's, is. I, John is smart. John is a smart guy. He knew he knew what he was doing when he, he really did. Up. Yeah, he did. Oh, thank you. He's great that way. Yeah. So, John, do we have any calls? I'd we love do. To yes, we do. Allow get people to experience this. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you want to go to our first caller? Sure. Is that okay with you, Melinda? Absolutely. You, I'm of in. course. Okay. All right. So, let's go to area code 508-508-881. You're on the line with Shirley Kelly and Melinda. Caller, are you there? All righty. <laughs> well, we'll come back to the calls. Um, let's go right back to you guys, and I'll come okay. back and figure out what's going on. Okay. Okay. Well, 
<clears throat> you know what that means, you guys. We're supposed to just talk here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd be, I'm really curious about when um, uh, you called it in life regression or what did you call that? Yeah, in life regression. Tell, can you tell so me about my that? My belief system is that the seven chakras mm -hmm. coincide with the seven stages of human development. So if it was psychology, it would be kind of like Eric Erickson's mm -hmm. material, right? Right. Yeah. And so it would be infant, baby, toddler, latency, puberty, adolescence, and adulthood. Mm -hmm. And that thin line of energy that connects the chakras together called the kundalini energy which you guys know the mm -hmm. kundalini and for those people who don't know that would be like kundalini yoga mm -hmm. um that that energy field will get broken when there is a trauma or a perceived trauma so not a, a, a trauma to one child is not always a trauma to another right, mm -hmm. right. you know because yeah. we, we all have our own sensitivities and so on so when there's a break in that chakra system or when there's a break in that energy field, the vibrational frequency goes out into the law of attraction and God being a giant mirror will reflect back to us what we were traumatized in childhood over. Okay. Mm. So in other words, that's where the repeating patterns come from. Mm. So my mother, for example, was uh, an emotionally aloof. She was a custodial parent. She was an emotionally wow. aloof person. She's a good mo She was a good person, but not always a good mother. She, she did the best she could. But um, so I always attract people to me that I have to prove that I'm lovable to because that's what I was taught as a child. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that thus the multiple marrying. So I will attract and I will often attract someone that is a, um, a cheater <laughs> to put it bluntly, mm -hmm. because then I can compete with another woman in order to get attention because I was also between two sisters. The sister right above me was accident prone. She was the one that, um, stepped on a needle when she was a kid and it went up her ankle and she had to have surgery on it. And wow. my other sister was um, very sickly. So my mother gave them a lot of her attention. So my, my thought process in my subconscious mind was you must compete with another woman in order to get attention. Wow. So wow. I attract that and I attract that aloof energy from my from my vibrational frequency from my karmic profile mm, that is so interesting wow. wow wow yeah and freud called that repetition compulsion there you go yeah so we're always kind of repeating it to to heal from it and i right. guess and, get it right and greg yeah. braden calls it fractal time i think mm -hmm. there's different you know yeah. ways that we can look at that yeah um but i just call it helping people get through a lifetime where they're a hot mess <laughs> <laughs> So true. I'm hot messing people. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I love how real you yeah. are. <laughs> well, so you know true. what I think, you guys? Somehow people have the idea that because we are mediums or because we have psychic ability or because we're healers, mm -hmm. that we don't have to go to a mechanic to get our car fixed. <laughs> you know, that somehow. Right. Yeah. Like, right. We're like regular people, are we not? Like, we, right. you know, we still bleed. <laughs> you right. know, we right. still, which was my point with my kid, you know, mm -hmm. to let people know, hey, I still have challenges, you know, I mean, Kelly, you're yeah. sitting there and you're, you're sick, you know, I mean, we still get sick. We still have right. financial challenges. We still have relationship issues. We have our own karmic profile, right, right? You know, it has nothing to do with our ability to do what we do, but we still have our own karmic profile. And a lot of people miss that. I think that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that mediums have their own karmic profile. Yeah, now, now what can someone do, you know, um, to maybe discover or learn a little bit more about their karmic profile and maybe what they came here to do or to heal or to get through? Well, you know, just like you would in a rehab, um, mm -hmm. you know, when somebody's an addict or an alcoholic, they have you do kind of a timeline um, of the addiction and when it all started and so on. So, you know, I think we have to do a timeline in life and be very real and not do a Mary Poppins. What I what I, <laughs> I mean about that is, <laughs> you know, make sure that you're really looking at a lot of people are still in a state of protection where their parents are concerned. And this isn't about mm -hmm. parent bashing by any stretch of the imagination, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. It, it is about, you know, understanding what was inputted into the data of our system mm -hmm. energetically. And we have to be realistic in looking at. Oh, uh -oh. oh no. Oh. John. I know. I'll try to get her back. <laughs> I'll try to get her back. Oh no. I think, oh, there, oh, there she there. is. Yay. Okay. All right. Hi, Melinda. Are we there? So, yes, yeah. you're back, honey. Yeah. So nope. you were saying, 
you have to be realistic in looking in, at yeah, looking at your family background, your parents, mm-hmm. where you came from, your perception. A lot of people want to be in a state of protection. I, I have a, a, a friend who, uh, who we still laugh about it. I, I was like, well, you come from a very dysfunctional family. She says, no, no, no. My family was just great. I said, no, I think you come from a dysfunctional family. Let's talk about it. Well, her father died when she was a teenager. Her brother was murdered. Oh my God. <laughs> her wow. nephew, her de- her nephew died in a diving accident. Um, I could oh, go wow. on and on. And wow. she was like, no, I, ca- oh, it's great. Fa- I come from no dysfunction whatsoever. Wow. You know, it's so funny <laughs> right, that you Shirley? say that because yeah. it's the exact same thing, you know, in the mm-hmm. therapy room. When someone comes in and says, my parents were the best, oh, I'm yeah. thinking, oh, there's oh, no. a lot of work you to do. You know you're in trouble. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and, that's right. Not, and again, not because it's parent bashing, but it's it's about understanding when they missed how that affected you. And there's so many people that look at me when I say, you know, you can love your parent and also acknowledge where they missed and how it affected you. And you can mm-hmm. be angry about that. And it's almost like there's there's this idea that it's all or you know if we understand that our parent did the best that they could we can't be angry at them and we can't acknowledge right. the things that they messed up and you can have both right. and it, exactly you, and it's actually part of life purpose you know a lot of people i know you both get this question all the time as i do what is my purpose in life yeah. what is my oh purpose? i get that Why I, I, am yeah. I here? Yeah. what is my purpose? that's right? the main reason people come to me yeah yeah right, yeah. right. And I tell everybody that, you know, your purpose is to understand yourself at that deep soul level, Mm -hmm. which, you know, um, moves you into a place of neutrality. Yeah. Wow. And you cannot move into a place of neutrality, all events on this planet being neutral events, except for the emotion that you assign to them. Right. You cannot move into neutrality, which is actually equal equals forgiveness because forgiveness Mm -hmm. is about being neutral about something that you no longer give your power away to whatever right Mm -hmm. so you cannot understand neutrality until you understand how how the car moved forward and how the car moved into reverse right yeah so you know that people on that's their your sole purpose on life is to get into a neutral zone so that when you go into um, the afterlife and you're doing your life planning you can leave the rest of the crap that you dealt with here behind and not have to do it over again Mm -hmm. that's your purpose until you don't have to come back here and do it anymore wow yeah that's great (laughs) yes do we have the call back i think we do i think this is laura she was holding earlier laura are you there laura going once (laughs) are we having trouble today we are (laughs) today it's just i don't know what's going on with the calls today there's a lot of energy here yeah yeah all right, we'll keep any, trying. Any questions in the chat room? Maybe they can go through the chat room and ask questions. Yeah, let's go ahead and look here and because see. Because it would be a shame if we can't oh, get anybody on. Yeah. Well, we keep being connected, and then we keep losing connection. I don't know what, why that keeps happening. It's never been this frequent. So. Well. Yeah, so this is interesting today. All right, well, I'll keep trying, ladies. Keep keep okay. talking, and, you, I, and I will do my we'll best. Keep, okay. We can- we can keep talking forever. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in good hands, John, if everything's not working well on you. Yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, so, so, Melinda, talk to us about, like, life review on the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm not quite sure how it goes because I can't remember any more than anybody else can. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> what Spirit tells me is, is that, you know, we have to ha- um, measure our integrity. Mm-hmm. So the way it comes at me, Kelly, is I figure if I always do the right thing, even when it's not the easy thing, mm-hmm. yeah. that my life review will be easy because I've done the right thing. Yeah. yeah. And so the accountability factor is when did we not do the right thing? Like, how did we, we, how did we, you know, not do the right thing? And you always do the right thing when your intentions are pure, even if you make a mistake. I yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah. So, That's... You know, it, it's really about, you know, pure intention and understanding of, of um, staying in love and what that means, staying in kindness and what that means, mm-hmm. you know, uh, understanding, you know, that uh, we have a duty on this planet to care about each other. Um, yeah. All this nonsense that's happening in the political climate mm-hmm. right now, the divisiveness that's happening, it's heartbreaking. Um, how scary it really is, you know, where are we going to be in life if this continues um you know 
what is the world going to be um, become if we don't move into a place of collaborative energy, if we don't move into a place of understanding and 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 um, sh- giving and sharing. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think uh, the whole planet is going to have a real, real shocking life review if we don't get our our crap together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I agree with you. I agree with right. you. Right. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah. we have her on now. Yeah, let's do with area code seven two zero seven two zero. You're on the line with Melinda, Shirley, and Kelly. Can we have your name, please, and where you're calling from? Hi, it's Gina. I'm calling from Centennial. Hi, Gina. Where are you calling from? From Centennial. Centennial. I have a Centennial, Colorado. Oh, oh. okay. Okay. Great. How can we help I, you? I haven't. It has been a while. I haven't called for a while, but I was just calling to give an update. I talked to um, Shirley, um, I think it was last year, the end of last year, and... Um, no, not Shirley. It was Kelly. Oh, okay. I think Kelly had told me that I am. Um, I that she would be seeing uh, me move into a home, uh, buy a home in around June, and that it would just happen really easy. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So I'm kind of like, yay! It's oh, really congratulations. Exciting, but see, Melinda, eventually really you get peaceful. some validation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but we were That's just talking wonderful. about. Thank you for yeah, calling. Yeah, I Gina. appreciate that, yeah. Gina. Thank you. Is it, do you have any questions for yeah, for Melinda, or for me, or for Shirley? Well, yeah, I've been trying to listen to see what you guys are talking about, but it's kind of breaking up. But um, I guess um, you can you do a reading or? <laughs> well, do you have a specific question mm-hmm. because that would help us with with time? We have. Um, let's, let's see. Um, yeah, I guess this home that we're getting into, I, while well, I take it, it's probably a good decision. Um, um, are we going to be happy there? I was I was hoping to be closer to the mountains, but we're not. I mean, is this going to be a place that we just stay in gold or just something that we, yeah. we're going to experience, I guess? Um, well, first and foremost, Colorado is just a, such a beautiful state, no matter where you are. <clears throat> and I, I think that you have this wonderful energy about you, sweetheart, that is mountainous of itself. Like you, you've got a, a lot of all, your own spiritual energy and growth in front of you. There's growth, there's spiritual growth in front of you. I do want to say to you that there is a um, money improvement coming to you in 2018. And um, so there are some some stuff with money that feels like it's it's going to grow or improve and it'll take a little bit more of your um, cons- money. Ba- it'll be more balanced with your money. Money seems to balance out. Um, I don't know if it was a stretch for you to get the house, but um, the, the house will will be um, an energy that allows for growth in your energy field so that there's going to be some improvement on money coming to you guys. Oh, good. Yes, and I, and I do have money left over from the mortgage. I will have money to, um, I want to start doing more workshops. And I, like, I'm going to see James Von Fry he comes to Denver in a couple of weeks. And I had planned on seeing Cali when I go to to Encinitas, and that'll hopefully be next year. So I'll still have Great. money to do all this stuff, and Perfect. I think that's going to help me grow and bring in more abundance. I feel like it's going to bring more abundance to our family and my I kids. Agree. <laughs> Are you meditating also, sweetie pie? Are you do you there? meditate? I didn't. Good. Say that again. Yeah. Do you meditate? You meditate daily. I <laughs> I try to. I have a, a five and two year old, and I stay at home with them. So I just go like into the bathroom sometimes, <laughs> and I take a deep breath, and I and I just close my eyes, or I you know I try to do wherever I can. I took them to the park, and I just go off under the tree, and I'll try to do it as much as I can. <laughs> you have a couple of crystal children there, you know. Do you know what I a crystal like child is? <laughs> a crystal child is a child that's emotionally mature and spiritually mature, and they're going to say yeah. some things that'll knock your socks off. And that's they've so chosen true. you as a mother for a reason. So as you proceed with your spiritual growth and you allow for that, there's growth in other areas of your life. Okay, who's had a problem with their yeah. knee or their foot? Their foot. Yeah. Is it my daughter? Maybe my my. 
older daughter, um, she has a um, behavioral kind of disability, but she's her one of her feet kind of turns in when left she when dra- she's She drags walking. it a little bit, it's, right, honey? Wow. She drags it. It, it almost feels like it's a little drag, if you know what I mean. A little drag. Hmm. Like she holds it. Like Could she my holds it. Too. Like a little drag. Okay. Does that does that make sense? What's your daughter's name? Nadine. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, you know, Nadine's going to sneak up on you spiritually in all kinds of ways. I want you to know she's a gift to you. She is. Um, just the challenges that we've had with her over the last few years have taught me more compassion and more. Mm. more oftentimes, but, oftentimes it's crystals crazy. come in with crystals come in with those kinds of. I don't want to call it a disability, but often crystals come in yeah, with that flavor of teaching for mm-hmm. you. Yeah, they mm. come in with that that juicy yeah. teaching moment for <laughs> everybody so around them, you know. And so let that kid, you know, like like let her like move into that juicy learning connecting energy okay i feel like i'm falling in love with my kids my family even more like it's all, all the time every every experience we have is like oh, i love it <laughs> it's painful sometimes but i, I love it that's well, beautiful i'm yeah. i'm glad that you called and i i think that you're connecting with the right medium with kelly and James, of course. We don't want we don't want to leave James out. And no. James, yay. <laughs> and you, Melinda. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for calling Thank Gina. you for really calling Gina. It. And thanks for the Thank follow-up. you. You're you're welcome. All righty. Have I a good night. What a, what, oh. a yeah. what a sweetheart. What a sweet what a girl. sweetheart. And spe- yeah. speaking of Melinda and James, she's got an event coming up with James. Oh, oh, tell us, tell us about that, Melinda. Oh my god, we had so much fun last year that we have to do it again. <laughs> and we're going to do an <laughs> an evening of readings on Friday night. And uh, James and I share a sense of humor. So <laughs> it's a fun evening. It's light. And I, yes, people do cry because, of course, we're talking to the other side. But they also laugh a lot. And, you know, I found that the more you keep people laughing, the more the dead people you can talk to. Because so <laughs> true. Less, yeah. The lighter the yeah. energy. The yeah, more that that's true. Go, right? Yeah. So, so I love that about him. And then we're the following day, we're going to do a workshop. I'm not sure what he's teaching this year, but uh, this year I'm teaching life purpose stuff uh, in more detail than, you know, skimming across the surface like I did tonight. And when so is that? That is in November, mm-hmm. November 17th and 18th at the Mauna Lucia Resort, which is a beautiful resort here in Scottsdale, mm-hmm. a wonderful oh. place to stay. And we it just had... I can't even tell you how much fun we had. We're just, it was like, we can't wait to do it again this year. And That's last time you brought in the Pope. <laughs> oh, James told me about that. That's so oh, exciting. You, Tell us what happened. Got, it, it was hilarious. I'm like, oh, I got a priest here. And he's getting me that. And he gave me that. And he gave me this. And anybody got him. And a woman raises her hand, you know. And she says, yeah, everybody knows him. And I'm, we're like, well, who is it? She's like, Pope John Paul. And so... <laughs> That's great. So James looks at me and he yeah. goes, you're channeling the Pope. <laughs> that <laughs> is I, so funny. I guess so. So he actually did give a little message to everybody. And it was actually a very similar message to what I just said about, you know, come on, we got to get our act together in the world kind of right. thing. Yeah. So that was, that was fun. <laughs> that That's was great. Fun. That's hilarious. Of all people, the Pope. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have? Oh, uh, yeah, we do. We have a few callers. Let me try to get that Laura back on the line. Laura, can you hear us this time? Yes, I can hear you this time. Excellent. Wonderful. Hi, Laura. Third time's the Yay. charm. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Where are you calling from, Laura? I'm calling from Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay. And what's your question? Um, I just want to know if there's like any energy around me or from my first husband or my second husband. Mm. Both have passed. I also have a grandmother who's passed and an aunt who's passed. And I'm just curious if there's anything swirling around there for me. Which one is giving you an amends? Giving me a what? Someone's apologizing. I, I think... Uh, the first one, Peter. Um, I think that there's a lot of an amends coming from Peter, actually, um, because I think um, even with his crossing, there is an amends. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And so he wants you to I know do. that um, he knows that you've forgiven him, by the way, which you did, didn't you? 
Yes. Yeah, you're, you, it's an interesting thing because I think you're asking about it, but you already know that you put that energy where it needs to be, which is behind you. Well, I also want to know for my children, which is he's the father of. Mm-hmm. One of them's a boy? No, I have two girls. Do you have a grandson? They're, they're grown, yes. Do you have a grandson? Mm-hmm. You do have a grandson because he's showing me a boy. I do. Okay, thank you. Okay, because he's showing me a boy, and so um, how many grandsons do you have? Two. Um, I, I want you to know that for some reason he hangs around with the grandsons more than he does anything. <clears throat> or it could be Bill also, my second husband, but he wasn't their biological father, but he was a father figure. So it's I hard think to I, say. I, I, honestly, I, I'm not dismissing that Bill is there at all. Um, I, I, I'm not. Um, but it, it honestly feels like it's it's the grandfather of the boys that spends some time with them because I think he's a, been a guardian or, or given some guardian energy to them. Okay. And one, one of the grandsons, I believe, has his middle name also. Okay. So I think it's, it's that, that feels like, which one of them had the issue with their chest, heart, lungs, diabetes, stroke, cancer? My second husband died okay, so, of a heart attack. Okay, so he, he's, he wants you to know that he's around too, but not in the same way that Peter is because, you know, I don't think Bill's amends is the same as Peter's. Do you understand what I mean? No, it wouldn't be. That is true. He has not much to apologize for. Yeah. So, you know, so Bill's like, yeah, whatever, I'm there and I love you and I'm here. But, but you know, Peter has had some regrets. And so that's who stepped up first. Okay. All right. Okay. And, that's um, and, good to know. And there's something about a doctor nurse. Can you tell me who's the nurse or who's seeing a doctor nurse? Or I why am. There's a... Okay. I'm a nurse. Uh, you're a nurse. Okay. And so, um, you know, um, and there, and there's also something about one of your kids that might be making a move or doing something with a move or something with real estate. Do you know which yes. one is doing that? Okay. Yeah, right. they're moving so, this week. <laughs> okay. So there you go, sweetheart. There's some, you know, like they're telling me there's a nurse or telling me that one of the kids is moving, hanging around the grandchildren. Okay. Do you know who Michael, 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 Michael or Michelle is? Michael oh my God. My, my son-in-law is Mike. Okay, and is your son-in-law, Mike, one of the children of the boys? No, but he's he, the other he one. knew okay. him as a boy. Okay, all right. So um, why is Peter attracted to Michael? Um, as a young child, we were neighbors to his parents, ah, and he yeah. actually used to take little Mike around with him to get ice creams or whatever. As okay. we moved away, and years later, my daughter reconnected with their son. <laughs> Nah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Peter likes the boys. I, what can I say? Tell the girls he loves them, but he likes the boys. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> That's great. Thank All you. Right, sweetheart, you're so welcome. Thank you. you have a wonderful evening, and I'm glad you got through. Thank you for calling. So yes, thank you for your patience, so Laura. All right. I wrote down Michael, and I surely pointed it out. The first thing I did. <laughs> she wrote down Michael. Oh. <laughs> first ah, thing. Wow. So, yeah. Very funny. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Can we squeeze one more call in? I know people want to get in. Yeah, we sure can. Would you like to pick is one? Is that okay with Is that okay with you, Melinda? Sure, and Kelly? of course. Yeah, yeah. Just one more. I yeah. know you're sick. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, do Melinda. I don't, I don't want to get in trouble, but I know I that they know, want these I calls. I know they do. I'm sorry. Okay, let's pick. I don't know. I can't. I'll, I'll just bring on area code 732-259. 732-259. Can we have your name, please, and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is Alexander. I'm calling from New Jersey. Hi, Alexander. Hi. Thank you for calling. How can we help you? Hi. What's your well, question? Well, I have a question. I'm very empath and sensitive. I can uh, <laughs> sit uh, feeling uh, other people feeling. But uh, my thing is, uh, what is my big concern is the life purpose because I feel disconnected with uh, this world. I feel like an alien if I'm around people, everybody looks at me like, uh, I always feel different. I'm still mm -hmm. feeling different. Uh, I want to be connect with, uh, with people, but it seems very hard for me. Mm, so it's Every hard for time you I try, it's very hard for it's... me to connect with people. I don't have friends, close Aww. friends like that. 
So um, I'm not saying it's not a lonely life, but it's, uh, you know, yeah. I'm always by most of the time uh, what is with your, myself. What's your birth date? May 2nd, 76. You know, you come in very spiritual. I mean, very spiritual. Um, and I know that this in this lifetime, you did not take an easy life path. And I'm very aware of that. Um, and you probably had a lot of change also going on in your life, too. A lot. Like, and I think probably from an early yeah, childhood, like there was, um, was there a divorce with your parents? Or did your dad just pass away? There, it looks like there was a, like a, a shift in the family when you were young. Uh, no, my mom and my father separate. I never met uh, my father physically. Oh, okay. uh, I never, uh, I didn't grow up with my father. I never met him physically, okay. uh, just by photos. Okay, but yeah, he's so, still alive. Okay, but there was a split. You you never saw him then. Okay, that's. I knew there was a situation with your dad. No, I never saw him. Okay, no. yeah. Um, and also, I'm getting an aunt that passed away on the other side. An aunt, and it looks like, oh my gosh. And you, it looks like you have the same relationship, the, an aunt that passed away that also suffered from depression. And in fact, we were talking about depression earlier on. Um, it runs in your family, and it particularly, well, on both sides of the family I'm getting. Melinda, are you getting that at all? Yes, I'm getting, I'm getting some personality disorder. Yeah, pe personality disorder, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we do oh, talk really? about that a lot. That's scary. Yeah. But I no, do it's not. No, it's not. No, well, I don't. I Highly spiritual people do come in with huh? that kind of thing. Don't make it scary. Make it a, a springboard for spirituality. Okay. No, I don't feel depressed. It's just like I said, I feel disconnect, you know, because uh, I, I like to be helping people, be around people, you know, but it seems like uh, we have a... Uh, uh, glass door in front of me that people can get through and I can't get through them either. So, I don't know. Do you feel distrustful of people? No, I I feel that, um, I don't know, <laughs> I try to connect, like I said, but uh, people don't, uh, some people come, they open easily to me, they tell me their problems, but uh, I feel like I understand everybody and nobody understands me. <laughs> mm. Have you have you gone to therapy? No, no, it's not a matter of that. I'm well, saying it's... Um, you know, uh, therapy is not a matter... It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you, but it, I think it might be... Um, it might be a good idea to explore, you know, what... Maybe what your part of it may be, what you're maybe... Um, uh, putting out there that causes people to maybe, you know, not connect with you. Sometimes there's always something that we do, and part of therapy is to explore all of that so then we can we can be aware of it. It brings up the awareness. The thing is that because when I'm in social events and I feel like heavy, you know, it's like I'm capturing everybody's energy, mm. and uh, sometimes I feel overwhelmed, and uh, you were saying, the so power. it's yeah. like it's blocked me to interact because I feel overwhelmed, and I can send some people very heavy, and I can some mm. sense other lights. It's a very rare I find somebody that I connect like easily. Mm. That's what I mean. Mm. There's so, a book called Highly Sensitive People that might right. be a very good book for you to read uh, when you have those kinds of sensitivities mm -hmm. and that energy can go in and out where you can be connected sometimes and feel so disconnected other times. Maybe that part of your purpose on the planet is to filter through that in yeah, order I'm to being, harness I'm your energy. I'm being searching a lot, reading a lot, uh, doing self-development because I also uh, see a lot of numbers. Uh, they call angel numbers, 11, 11, 4, 4, 3, 3. I see that all the time. It's the, I still see it's been years. I'm seeing those numbers. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I feel presence of people. I don't know if people or angel or whatever. I feel... Uh, sense of somebody besides me it's always on the both sides right and left i have somebody like i have these two people uh, 
if I'm uh, very, like I said, or meditating or very peaceful, I, feel, I sense this presence of these two people who I don't know which is my garden angel. Or I don't know what it is, but I know I sense it. Yeah. Well, you've got all the ingredients of a wonderful connection to spirituality when you've got dual angels on either side of you and you can feel them so well. And so I think you just really need to look at being so sensitive and see how to move your energy in a different direction so that using those angel guides and maybe the Virgin Mother, um, you could move that energy into a place where you find a little bit more balance and a little less duality in your life. And that would be your life purpose. Thank you so much for yeah. calling. Yeah, I'm so good. sorry that's we've thank, run thank out of you. time, but thank, thank you for you. calling. Yeah, it sounds like she was an empath and she needed mm -hmm. to work well, on some... Well, and I yeah. love that you recommended so, the book on HSP. Yeah. We talk about that a lot. Yeah. Some yeah. energy mm -hmm. uh, management. Yeah. Is what she, yeah. 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 And some, some that's shielding. That's a good way to, to say yeah. it. Yeah. Energy yeah. management. Yeah. Like that. Well, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, I Melinda. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you, guys. This is so much fun. It? Oh my gosh. So Melinda, you got a couple events coming up. Let's talk about that. You got the Four Pillars yeah. event coming up in oh October. Oh my gosh. Listen, this little Courtney Long that I did an angel thing with, this you look in this child's eyes and you see pureness. Dr. Melanie Shreenan, oh my God, what a brilliant woman, is has um, been both um, certified by Greg Braden and Dr. Joe Dispensa to teach their material. Deborah Stangl, I have not met yet, but I hear such wonderful, positive things. Things, and we're all going to be represented by Heather Kluwett, who is a shaman in Sedona. So we're teaching wow. the four pillars of abundance in Sedona on October 6th and 7th. And that is going to be great fun. I just think it's so going to be awesome. Terrific. I'm going to be teaching about spiritual abundance and understanding how spirit is abundant with us everywhere mm -hmm. and how to tap into that. Great. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. And then wow. you got a cruise coming up on oh, top yeah. of that. Tell us wow. About that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're going to go to the Caribbean Fine. or the Caribbean, depending on what part of the country yeah. you're from. <laughs> and <laughs> it's going to be awesome. And we're going to be doing some workshops and some readings and just uh, just having a great time together all um uh, bouncing around different islands in the Caribbean and having a, a, a good spiritual crew. So mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that. So that's on the uh, uh, November 26th, right after my event with James. Mm -hmm. So it's oh, going to wow. be a whirlwind November. I was going to say, you got yeah. a big packed fall. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Yes, yeah. absolutely. A power packed fall for you. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wonderful. And all that information is also on your website. Yes. Right, Melinda? It is. Thank you, Shirley. Okay. So, Melinda. What is the Melinda, Melinda Vail. Vail. Dot com, mm -hmm. right? V A I L. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, wow. thank you so much oh, for being Melinda, with us. Thanks so I much. It was a you treat. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we love, love you too. Too. <laughs> That was so great. <laughs> thank you so much. And you, you promise you'll come back. I oh, will yeah. come back, and I hope to see you all when I'm in. Oh, we'll have dinner. California. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely. In, you're coming to L A. next month. Right? Stay on, and we'll. Yeah, stay on and we'll figure it out. But okay. Okay. Thank okay. you Thanks, so everybody. much for watching. Thanks, everybody. We'll Thanks. see you next week. And always You've remember. Been to oh. both sides now, <laughs> featuring the you can say it. Go ahead. Duo, okay. I was going to say, Shirley always remember there are Kelly always Wine. two sides two to every story. All, All right. right. <laughs>